What's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint, and today we're going to take a look at the Umbrella Academy Library Editions. We have Volumes 1 and 2. We're going to do a review, and we'll do some overhead shots. We'll talk about the construction of the book, what's, uh, what kind of bonuses or extras do they have, and we'll talk about the story and kind of comparisons to the show as well. Make sure that you guys are subscribed to the channel, hit that notification bell, and if you enjoyed this video, hit the like. Now, as of recording, uh, these are the only two library editions that are out. The third volume, Hotel Oblivion, is supposed to come out September 29th per Amazon. I know that date is a little subject to change, but for now, we'll just talk about the first two, which would be uh, Apocalypse Suite and Dallas. If you guys aren't familiar with Umbrella Academy, there is a Netflix series that is out right now. They just dropped season two. I just did a review. You can check it out if you'd like. It's based off the comic book by writer Gerard Way. Now, Gerard Way is also the lead singer for the band My Chemical Romance, and he's actually also Joe Rogan's cousin, even though they've never met, which I thought was pretty interesting. Now, it's not so much a celebrity who wanted to jump into comics and just use his name. He has been praised as like a legitimate comics fan and a good writer. Uh, the forewords in these two books are even by some of the best, Grant Morrison and Neil Gaiman. So he gets a lot of respect in the comic book industry for being a true, passionate writer and somebody who loves his hobby. I'll never be able to read these not having seen the show. So I'm always comparing it to the show. And honestly, I feel like I know the characters much more and, and I know them better from watching the show first because... These two arcs are just six issues each, and I don't know that I would have gotten the same amount of depth out of those characters had I not watched the show first. So I do recommend to watch the show. Uh, if you haven't read these yet, maybe you're on the fence. I think uh, it spends more time developing the characters and explaining their backstory. But going back and reading it, you kind of can see, okay, this is where they got the source material from. Some of the stuff is similar, and some stuff they have you know, drastically changed. So like I mentioned, book one here is Apocalypse Suite, and this has to deal with Vanya. Vanya is one of the seven orphans that Reginald Hargreaves adopted. Now Hargreaves is portrayed as like this dignified, upper society, higher class guy. He adopted all of these children that were born on the same day at the same time from seemingly women who were not pregnant. There were these miraculous births, and he tried to snatch up as many of these orphans as possible because these these women weren't ready to be mothers, uh, and a lot of these children went up for adoption. Come to find out that they all have superpowers. So he puts together this Umbrella Academy. He trains them and basically makes them a superhero team. So this is kind of like a superhero book, but not really. Uh, the artwork, which is done by Gabriel Ba is very uh, reminiscent of Mike Mignola. It has very similar kind of line work. You feel like you're reading Hellboy or BPRD. And the colorist, I, I believe it's uh, Dave Stewart. And then you have Nate uh, Picos as well on the book. Uh, the colors feel very, what I want to say, very flat, right? Kind of like Mignola's style. A lot of negative space, a lot of solid reds, blacks, and blues. Like, you know, solid colors like that. The Umbrella Academy, they do heroic stuff. But uh, they always seem to be kind of uh, preventing the apocalypse. And Vanya uh, is the main protagonist, uh, or antagonist, I should say, for the apocalypse suite. So um, that's kind of like the gist of book one. Then book two is titled Dallas. And it's kind of where they borrowed a lot of the season two from. Uh, Dallas, Texas, more specifically 1963 during the assassination of John F. Kennedy. So you can see where they got the ideas and they borrowed from the source material even though a lot of things are different especially with the characters Hazel and Cha Cha who don't play as big of a role in this comic book series as they do in the first season and also they're only in the second book whereas they're in the first season of the show the overall universe is well thought out I think the writing is done really well Gerard Way gives a fun quirky type of writing even the titles of the books will be like professor hargrove aka the monocle in umbrella the academy you know uh can i have another cup of coffee like these long elaborate titles it feels very quirky like rocky and bullwinkle or something like that and, and what i thought was interesting in these books the characters have uh three aliases right in the show they're all numbered he calls them number one number two number three and so on till number seven 
But then they also have their real names. Luther is number one. Diego is number two. Uh, Alyssa is number three. Allison, I'm sorry. I always mess up Allison. But they also have like superhero names in this book. Like uh, Luther is also a space boy or they call him space. Diego is um, the Kraken. Klaus is um, Seance. Allison is the Rumor. Uh, ben is the Horror. And Five is always... Uh, well, Five doesn't have a real name, but he also goes by the Boy. So I, I thought that was interesting that they had those other names that we're not used to hearing in the, uh, in the show. Let's go ahead and flip through these books. We'll take a look at uh, you know, how they're made, what, what, what they contain, the artwork, and, uh, and then we'll come back. All right, so here's a look at the front of uh, Volume 1, Apocalypse Suite. It's like a black kind of, um, almost feels like a suede texture, and you can see it kind of gets a little dirty. Here is the spine. This is the same height as like your typical DC Absolute Edition, so very large, oversized pages. Here is the back. You can see Newsarama praises him. Grant Morrison praises him, gives a nice forward as well. Uh, and this was also an Eisner Award winner. So you can see this was a $40 cover price. It does contain uh, six issues and a lot of extras. Uh, and obviously published by Dark Horse. This reminds me of what the wallpaper used to look like in Subway restaurants. All right, here we go. Like I said, Grant Morrison gives him a nice introduction to the book. He has some of the greats. I'm excited to see who gives the introduction for the third volume. So you had very detailed, realistic covers, and Gerard kind of talks on that in, in some of, in the back of one of these books. I'm personally not a fan when the covers don't match the interior artwork. I almost feel like it's a bait and switch. I really wish that uh, they would have had covers that were drawn by, is it Gabriel? Yeah, Gabriel Ba. So this is how it opens with an atomic elbow drop. But this is basically telling the story of these women that had uh, these extraordinary children birth kind of like via immaculate conception. 43 children were born and he ended up grabbing seven of them. Now guys, this is going to be a little bit of a spoiler, but when they talk about Reginald Hargreaves, uh, right in the beginning, they tell us he's an alien. And that's something that we don't find out until the end of season two so i was like oh man if you're a comic reader you already knew that was coming so here's what i'm talking about with the titles the umbrella academy featuring sir reginald hargreaves aka the monocle in the day the eiffel tower went berserk being part one of a of six in the story apocalypse suite so here's the artwork like i said it feels very mignola to me you know and i i'm sure artists hate to be compared to others but you know, that's the kind of vibe I get with the colors. You see these deep blacks. It's not overly detailed. It's kind of very, uh, I feel like the term is monochromatic, but that could mean something totally different. Here goes uh, number one, Luther, Space Boy. His ape suit is much more ape-like in the comic than it is in the show. And the show is kind of, I like it more in the show. It's much more like he's transforming into this simian type of being, whereas this almost looks like he's wearing a suit. You got Pogo, the monkey, and, and number five, the boy. See, here's the cover for issue two. I, I forget the artist. So anyway, uh, in book one, kind of like in season one, the Umbrella Academy is reunited because of the death of their adoptive father, Reginald, a.k.a. the Monocle. This is showing how number five went forward too much in time, and he... Uh, he gets stuck there for years and becomes an old man. When he transfers back, he gets stuck in the body of his 10-year-old self. So, very cool. They took a lot of uh, creative liberties with the appearances of the characters for the show, man. Because, like, Vanya, her storyline, they totally changed. And, and I guess they changed and added more stuff. Because these 12 issues don't really feel like enough to give two seasons of a television show. You know what I mean? So... This is the orchestra recruiting Vanya to help her uh, basically start Doomsday. And you can see why she would start. The whole time Reginald is training all the others, telling them they're special. He's telling her that she's normal and she's not special. And they constantly shit on her in, in the comic and in, in, in the show. And that's why she uh, rebels once she figures out she is the strongest one with her kind of reality warping powers. 
uh, which is used to crack the moon and the remnants of the moon crash onto the planet to uh, to destroy it. So that's basically what they're trying to prevent from happening uh, in Apocalypse Suite. Number five is in the future, and, and he's living in the apocalypse, so he knows via the newspapers on the ground and everything what causes it. There is another small backup story in this. We'll take a look at that. So let's look at some of the extras in book one. So you have uh, this afterward by Gerard Way, which was very interesting to read. Then you have some sketches by Gerard. So he sketches his stuff to give the ideas to Gabriel. Like this is all Gerard Way stuff right here. So I thought that was pretty cool to see. He kind of talks about how much time he dedicated to this between gigs, being on the road, and things like that. Now here's fleshing out some of the other characters. This is Diego with Rumor. The Boy, Klaus, his seance. Vanya, a.k.a. the White Violin, which is the name that the orchestra gives her. Some... Some more artwork from the cover artist. Some advertisements. Now I believe this was a, uh, oh no, that's not, that was just some artwork. Yeah, some sketches. So here's the trade paperback cover. So the, uh, the last issue was actually something they put out Kind of like promo material. Let's find it real quick. The short stories. Yeah, here it goes. This talks about kind of uh, a short story to set up the on the mini series. I guess is the best way to say it. Kind of just get, went through an adventure of theirs. All right, let's look at book two. Book two has the same construction. It's a red book, same spine. Here's the back. New York Times bestseller, 2008 Eisney and Harvey Award winning series. See, Neil Gaiman does the introduction here and the afterword again by Gerard Wade. They both have ribbons built into the book for those uh, built in bookmarks, which is cool. Here's Gabriel Bob with the boy. So, book two, Dallas. So, it plays out much different in the show. In the show, they all go back into the 60s during different times and kind of live out these arcs, which don't happen in here whatsoever. Uh, they do play with the fact that there is this commission that monitors the space-time continuum and they send out Hazel and Cha-Cha who are super deadly. And it's funny, you see in the back that they were meant to be wearing like Mickey Mouse uh, helmets at first. See, they have like these cartoonish heads. But we'll look at the back when we see the... Uh, the sketches. Yeah, then they have this arc in the comic where uh, Luther becomes extremely overweight, and they don't play with that in the show, unless they plan to do that for season three. But there goes Hazel and Cha-Cha with those kind of weird hats they have on. They never take them off in the um, comic. And what's cool is that Klaus, you know, his name is Seance, and he, he can speak with the dead. He dies here, and, and this is heaven. <laughs> So they draw heaven and they and they have him interact with God, who is like a Clint Eastwood type of character, which I really enjoyed that little section, man. I thought that little part of issue, what is that for, was, was totally awesome. But you can see he looks way different than he looks in the show. But I like the show portrayal. They do show this guy in season two. What's his name now? The, 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 the goldfish guy or whatever. This is the cover for the fourth issue. So just like in the show, Allison gets her throat slit and she uh, she can't talk. So she writes down in this pad. So. <laughs> the earth getting destroyed. That was awesome. So yeah, just like in the show, the, the second arc is also trying to prevent an apocalypse event from happening.
All right, so he goes to Gerard Way afterward. Oh, I didn't see the Neil Gaiman stuff. Where's it at? Oh, here it is right here. So this this kind of short story was kind of like what you would have expected from a rock star writer to do in comics. You have Vanya and Diego are part of a band, and they kind of are trying to choose between the band and being superheroes. So that's kind of how that plays out. And I think that one was a little, like, cliche from Gerard. But, hey, I guess it's kind of like he had to do one of those, you know? And then you have a lot of kind of uh, concept artwork and advertisements for the second series. That's awesome. It, it almost looks like Rob Liefeld or somebody. Who is that? Oh, that's Jim Lee? Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was Jim Lee. I couldn't find his signature when I was reading it. That's pretty dope. It goes to Hazel and Cha Cha show. I guess that's a variant. See, originally they were supposed to have Mickey Mouse hats, but he says in here, like, hey, we would have got sued to oblivion had we used that. But much more creepier, right? Old Man number five. They talk about God from the series. Awesome to see Gerard sketching his own ideas, though. That's, uh, that's really dope. And then you get a little more info about the creative team. All right, guys. So that is my review of the Umbrella Academy Library Editions. I, I'm excited to get the third Library Edition, and we'll do a separate review for that. But, you know, I just knocked these out. I thought it would be good timing to get a video out with the show recently released. Um, if you guys are looking to purchase any uh, Library Editions, Absolute Editions, Omnibus, check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com. They sell them up to 50% off. They have immaculate packaging, quick shipping, and great customer service. Plus, they have a bargain bin where you can get titles up to 90% off. If you mention Gem Mint in the memo at checkout, your next order will have free shipping if you're in the United States. So go ahead and check out CheapGraphicNovels.com. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Uh, notification bells on and hit that like if you enjoyed the video thanks for watching stay minty fresh peace